Hi, I'm Scott. Hi, I'm Lindsay. And today we're going to show you how we put in this wall sconce on Dad It Yourself. All right, so normally a bedside light is like six feet off the floor mm -hmm. up here, but I measured down to five feet. What do you think about that? Yeah, so definitely lower feels better, but I almost would like it a little bit lower because when you're laying in bed, you got to pull this switch yeah. to turn the light on. So maybe four and a half? Yeah. Well, let's look at four and a half then. Okay. Okay, so here's the project today. We're gonna to put some bedside wall sconces in. And as you can see, I got blue tape on the wall. I've already measured for the studs. They're 24 inches on center. This is a two by six exterior wall. And I've got an outlet right down there. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna tie into that outlet and bring power up to roughly where you see that mark on the wall. And then over here, same thing. There's another plug down behind in the corner of the bed. And we're gonna put another sconce there. They're gonna be about 14 inches from the center just so you can reach them from the bed so i just sent lindsay downstairs to turn off the power and there it is no more power so lindsay's back from uh turn off the power that's lindsay wave lindsay um and i noticed that these lights turned off when she turned the power off too so the wall outlets and the recessed lighting are on the same circuit it looks like there's five six seven lights in this room and two maybe four outlets um, shouldn't be a big issue. Those recess lights are all LEDs and these are going to be low voltage LED as well. So uh, no power draw, but normally 10 to 12 fixtures at most on a circuit before you start overloading it. What kind of a screwdriver is that? I forget which kind this it is, but I don't a, really like it's it. A, it's, a, it's a Klein 731. Mm -hmm. It has a a uh, square head and a, a spade bit, mm -hmm. and it's especially for electrical. It gives mm -hmm. you that, that good torque and stuff like that. Awesome. So I really like it. You can use a flat head or a Robertson if you want, but this is my favorite screwdriver for doing electrical. Tricks of the trade. Yep. Okay, so what I see in here We've got two blacks and two whites, so it means electricity comes into this outlet and then goes out. My assumption is it goes down the wall to the other outlet. So what we're going to do is we're going to pigtail into the new outlet and then we're going to run uh, another circuit of electrical up to the box that we're going to install on the top. So nice, easy thing. Um, what I see here, though, is probably the easiest thing is going to be is going to be to cut this box out and put a new uh, an old work box in. So we'll have an opening here and open there. We can run the wire down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out of the way and then we're going to cut that box out. So I know that the stud is on this side. So there's a nail here and a nail here. What I'm going to do is use my reciprocating saw and I'm going to tuck it in next to the box. Try to cut that nail out of the way. Much, much, much later. Cut the hole out for the light box. Uh, you can use a keyhole saw, you can use a razor blade. I like a multi tool, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, hopefully, we're going to get lucky and I'm going to be able to stick this Romex down this hole and it's going to pop out at least where I can reach it down to that lower hole that we just opened up. Hey Scott, yeah. what's Romex and what's that? Oh, that? So this is 14.2. Um, it's good for like outlets in houses, um, lighting and stuff like that where it's low demand. Right. So if we were going to be in like a kitchen where you'd have appliances plugged in or maybe in a garage, you'd want to use 12.2, which is like 20 amps and higher. This is only 15 amp service. So okay. this should be more than adequate. 
and this stuff is not cheap anymore. So getting away with a lower grade uh, wire for this project will save the cost as well. So let's see if we can get down in here and get this in. I don't have to get the fish stick out. Fish stick. <laughs> okay, so we got the pull stick in here. and Got it down there and I got this all taped off so it doesn't catch. Let's go ahead and just pull this wire through now. It should be pretty easy. If you've never used these pull sticks, they're pretty awesome. Uh, they're super flexible, and these actually glow in the dark. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off right there. All right. So now, pull that out. Cut this one off so I have a little extra up here. And then we're done with that. Let's go ahead and put the box in. Old work box. These are great for putting a new box in. What they do is they actually clamp on the inside of the um, drywall. So I've checked this hole. As you can see, there's already drywall on this to make sure it fits in here. And what I did is popped one of the little strand leaf tabs out, and I'll go ahead and push my extra wire through there. Like so, Get some extra. I'm going to get at least six to eight inches coming out of the box. And I've got plenty down below, so I'm not worried. All right, and then we're just going to push that in there. And the key to this is you want these two holes to be nice and horizontal. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to tighten this up. What's happening is the little flaps, they pop up and then they just squeeze against the inside of the drywall. And just hold everything nice in place. And snug. Doesn't need to be tight, just needs to be snug. There we go. Scott, do you prefer doing this by hand, or is there a reason why you wouldn't use a, a um, drill? I could use a drill, but sometimes it's like, you don't want to over torque it, you don't want to bend yeah, it. they're easier. Um, when you do it by hand, especially with like these, because I'm screwing into plastic, I'm not going to strip it out, I'm going to feel the, like, when it gets tight, you know, and right, what, where's that sweet spot is. So that looks pretty good right there. I can check it for a level in a minute, but I think we'll be okay. All right. And strip that wire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ground wire and put it around this grounding screw that grounds the plate and bonds everything. And then that'll also take the weight off the fixture for me. Then I'm going to take this ground wire and we're going to twist it onto this one like this. And put the wire nut on there, like that. And we're going to take that, stick it inside, just to tuck that out of the way. And then we're going to repeat that with this white one down here, which is really short. Um, actually, I'm going to strip that off a little more. Give us a little more connection. These uh, wire strippers are a little larger wire. There we go. Twist that. I know it's hard to see my hands keep getting in the way. And then we'll bring all of these black wires together. I don't know why there's three of them coming out of the fixture, but there are. Like that. together with the last wire in it. Okay, and then everything gets tucked up inside. So I got another uh, old work box here and I've already pushed the uh, um, strain the release out of the way so I can pull three sets of wires now. We have the, the wires coming in for the power from wherever they come. And then we have the wire going out to the other outlet. Right here. I can get these out of the way. Wow. 
Okay, and then this is the wire for the new light bulb or light fixture that I'm going to bring in the bottom of the box. And then the key here is getting this all pulled through and this box all the way back in the wall to the point where all the insulation and everything is back in the box. And I knew this hole is okay because I took a box out of it. So, Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing up in here. All right, so we have three sets of wires coming in here, but the back of the outlet can only take two. So what we have to do is pigtail. And what I'm gonna do is, let's pull this wire off first. Okay. So we got this fancy, fancy plate. Uh, Lindsay's a little bougie. Mm -hmm. She likes her light fixtures and outlets to look really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one on there first and then we'll tie all the things together and pigtail everything. So there's that. Look, where's the screws, Linz? Right here. There. So this box is plate grounded, so I'm going to tie all the grounding wires together. I'm actually probably going to twist these. Like this. And then bring the strand in next to them. Tie it in. I use the red anchor nuts when I have four wires. The little tan or yellow ones don't have enough capacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that in there like that. Okay, so now I got two, three pairs. And I'm gonna cut these a little shorter. It's just a little too much for me right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and strip these all back. pigtail all the blacks together. What that does is the electricity will continue to pass this outlet box even if this um, receptacle fails. Does that make sense? Like Christmas lights. If you wire through the outlet and the outlet fails, the electricity can't pass through it. So I got that one there. That's awesome. And then I'll bring the white wires. Bring this one like this. I really get these in here because these outlets go way in there. Here's a receptacle. Look at those. Aren't those fancy looking? I think so. Yeah, I know you would. Okay, I got too much on that one. How do you know you have too much? So uh, you don't want copper showing outside of the receptacle. And this one has a common neutral in the center. And then you have the hot or the line voltage on either side. And you can split just like a regular plug. You can bridge these and turn this into a switched outlet also. So take that like that. It's tight. Push that in there. These just snap in here. There we go. These are from, who is he from? Legrand. Legrand. Le and I'll put a link to these in the uh, video description if you guys are interested. Okay. And there we go. All done. Voila. Okay, moment of truth. Well, there's no power yet. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so power's back on. Lindsay's back. She's gonna try it out. Woohoo! Look at you. Hey, Lindsay, why isn't there a lampshade on there? Lampshade is uh, getting outsourced for custom wrapping. Oh my god, you're so bougie. All right, so I know the lighting's not very good in here, but we're just gonna do a time lapse on this side. That took us a little over an hour to do the other side. Hopefully, we're gonna do this one in about 15 or 20 minutes. 
So let me get started taking all this apart, cutting that hole out. Lindsay's gonna jump in here and help me too. Okay, battery in the camera died. You probably noticed that. There's Lindsay. We got it all done. It's all tucked back in. That was pain in the ass. There was actually four sets of wires in that box instead of three like the other one. So we had to do a little bit of shoving and pushing and stuff. But we got it. And that light's in there. Lindsay, why don't you turn that one on now? My pleasure. Ho -ho. Let's get this cleaned up. Okay, overall that project took us about two hours. Uh, any homeowner with basic electrical knowledge can probably do that. What do you think, Lindsay? You think you could have tackled this on your own? Yeah, now that the steps are broken down, I think I can at least go through the motions. <laughs> I might need a phone call here or there about which wires to use, 14 gauge versus yeah. 12, that kind uh -huh. of thing. I've also needed a few bailouts from you in the past. So I'm banned from doing anything with electrical without Scott, but I think the basic uh, the basic gist should be manageable by most homeowners. Speaking of electrical, if you are not comfortable working on electricity, please hire a licensed professional. It'll be well worth the money and a peace of mind. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this video, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and if you do hit the bell for notifications if i've done anything in this video or any of my other videos that have helped you out consider giving me a super thanks or becoming a channel member thanks again thanks to lindsay thanks for watching dad it yourself thanks dad it